Hey everybody, this is Dr. Daniel Choi here from North Texas Dental Surgery Wisdom Teeth and Denture Implant Center and I want to talk about failed gum grafts. Um, before I go into that, if you can give us a thumbs up on this video if you find the content useful and also if you like the channel then give us a follow, that would be greatly appreciated, thanks. Alright, so failed gum graft, I'll tell you honestly as a periodontist, um, of all the procedures that we do, science lifting, all on fours, implants, all these things, um, I honestly think that gum grafting back in residency was the hardest procedure to master. It is a very technique sensitive procedure. So if you ask me like, you know, and I've been, this is my 10th year of practice now here in 2020, um, of all the procedures that I do that when a patient goes home that I'm still wondering what they're going to have the best result from, it's a, it's a gum graft. And the reason I say that is not only is it again very difficult technique sensitive procedure, there's so many variables that affect how you can have a good outcome, but also it's literally, I tell patients that if you want a good outcome, it's 50% on the surgeon and it's 50% on the patient and how they're taking care of their, their, um, their the graft, following their post-op instructions, are they brushing carefully, eating carefully, all these things. So. Um, you know, first off, how do we know that we have a failed gum graft? Well, one of the telltale signs, and this isn't 100% true all the time, but um, if you see that the graft is turning very white, um, and there's a big patch of it starting to develop outside of your gum, that could be a telltale sign. But again, that um, is not 100% necessarily true. I've done thousands of these, and I've even seen some grafts that were looking a little white, um, and they revascularize, and so they and they heal amazing. So. Um, that would be honestly like if you were ever asking a periodontist what the telltale sign of a failed gum graft would be it is definitely going to be um, a graft that is turning white. But again, don't always take that to the bank. It's not necessarily true 100% of the time. So, but you might then be asking, well, like, why did the gum graft fail? Well, two major things. Number one, obviously, was a surgical error. So that's why I was saying earlier it's a very technique sensitive procedure. Uh, my biggest piece of advice: if you're going to get a gum graft done, get it done with a periodontist. Who knows what the heck they're doing another thing that i would recommend is like go to their website ask them i mean take a look at their before and afters like do they have a lot of before and after photos look at clinical examples that they have at their office or online to make sure that they're good at doing this procedure because i don't want to be cruel about this but i've seen plenty of periodontists who aren't good at this procedure either so um, just make sure that they have a lot of photos to back up their work um, another thing too is that although it's important to find a good surgeon like anything else in life if you were to get plastic surgery obviously you want to find a good surgeon but it's also super super important with this procedure that you very 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 carefully follow the post-op instructions and I'm talking about um, and we have a link to our post-op instructions too but don't pull up on your lip and see what he did because any pulling or tension on that and movement of the graft is going to cause failure um, keep in mind that this is a piece of tissue we transplanted to the roof of, um, from the roof of the mouth um, to the recipient site or we took human donor tissue like alloderm or they had the pinhole procedure that you did but these procedures were transplanting tissue so it's very important that you don't move it excessively so that also goes for eating so when you're eating do not bite into a piece like a sandwich or a burger or fruit or anything like that because that will cause distortion in your gums that can cause issues so you would have to stay with a soft diet um, and then also uh, brushing, like making sure that you're brushing carefully. So, you know, we again, we have those in our post-op instructions, but you want to be super careful of how careful you take care of your graft. Um, so liquid to soft diet, not pulling and looking, um, and um, the way, again, you brush and uh, take care of your teeth. Um, those are all super important factors when it comes to getting a good predictable outcome to not have a failure from your gum graft. So I want to talk about um, another reason that could have happened, although it's super rare because if you do a gum graft, you would be on antibiotics anyways, um, but sometimes you can get an infection. So although, again, like I said, it's super, super, super rare. I do tons of these gum grafts and I rarely see infections. So um, just make sure that you do a really good job of keeping it clean. But if you did see an infection, you would see pus coming from the area. And this leads into a very important point, um, gum graft failure. So one of the two critical things I always ask my patients, make sure that you do not smoke. You cannot smoke. Absolutely, that is a no. You cannot smoke, 100%. There's, you can't vape, you can't smoke. If you do that, that gum graft's not going to work, 100%. Um, the other thing is, do you have uncontrolled diabetes? If you're a diabetic, then you're not going to heal as naturally. I mean, as well. If you're uncontrolled, you're going to heal horribly and you're not going to have a good result at, all, result at all. So if you are a diabetic and you're going to get this procedure done, definitely make sure that you're a controlled diabetic. Now, what should I do if this gum graft didn't work out? 
So the thing is, we can always reattempt to do it later on, but you want to wait at least three months for it to, for yourself your tissues to heal. Um, that way, the tissues are going to be mature enough. Um, and also another thing is make sure that um, make sure that you don't have this procedure done too many times um, on that same area because. Um, if you're trying a second or third, fourth time, then um, especially as you go up a number of tries, you build up more scar tissue and you're not going to get as much release uh, uh, from your, your graft or your gum tissue. I know it's a little confusing, but it's just, bottom line, it's harder to get a good result. So that's why it's pretty important that, now, again, like I said, you find a good surgeon and also you really follow those post-op instructions really well. Okay, so hopefully you guys found that information helpful. And again, if you follow that, uh, you thought that information was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and follow on the channel. Thank you.